drawing Lewis structures with multiple bonds. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about the basic steps for drawing Lewis structures. Now we've talked about these some in previous videos, but we're going to go through it just a little bit and in a slightly different way. So the first thing we're going to do is identify the central atom and the surrounding atoms in our compound. Now most of the time, for our purposes, the central atom is the one that is written first in the formula. So you can see here, carbon tetrafluoride, the carbon is written first, that's our central atom. And that central atom is going to be the one that we place the surrounding atoms around. So that just gets a little bit of terminology out of the way. So you can see carbon is the central atom and the surrounding atoms are these fluorines. Now, just you know, making note that it's a, a compound like water, that's a notable exception. The central atom would be oxygen, not hydrogen. And there are actually numerous exceptions to that, but generally, if it's not obvious, it will be indicated. Okay, so the basic steps for drawing Lewis structures. What do we want to do? The first thing we're gonna do is count the total number of valence electrons in our compound. So um, for, for each atom contributing valence electrons, we're gonna add all those together. And if we have a negative charge overall on our species or our compound, then we're gonna add electrons, maybe one, maybe two, depending on the charge. And we're also gonna remove one for every positive charge on the species. So if it's an anion, we're gonna end up adding electrons. If it's a cation, we're gonna end up removing electrons. So we're gonna write that central atom down and we're gonna surround it with the surrounding atoms. So I'll illustrate this in the slides coming up. After that, we're gonna put a pair of electrons between the central atom and each surrounding atom. And we're gonna use a dash for that. So again, I'll illustrate this coming up. And then we're gonna go around with the remaining valence electrons, we're gonna complete those octets. So we're gonna make sure that every single atom in our compound has an octet around it, except for hydrogen, of course, which is satisfied with two electrons, and that fills its valence shell. After that, we're gonna put any remaining electrons on the central atom. So that, that's where they would go if you still had electrons left over after filling all the octets on the surrounding atoms. And the last thing we're gonna do is check that every atom has a full valence shell, or eight electrons. Okay, so what we're gonna do is draw the Lewis structure for uh, boron tetrafluoride. So the boron atom, in this case, you can see it's written first, it's the central atom. The F atoms, or the, the fluorine atoms, they're all gonna be the surrounding atoms. And notice we have a, a negative charge here, and that's an assumed one, so this is minus one, so that means we have one extra electron that we need to add to our valence electron count. So let's go ahead and add up all those valence electrons. So boron has three valence electrons, so that's boron right here. We have four fluorines, one, two, three, four, and each one of those contribute seven valence electrons. And finally, that extra electron, we have to add that on because we have a negative charge on our compound. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get to it as far as uh, drawing the Lewis structure for this compound. So we're gonna write the central atom, and so there's boron right there, and then we're gonna surround it with these fluorines. I evenly distributed them, but technically speaking, that isn't necessary for plain Lewis structures. Now, next thing we're gonna do is put a pair of electrons between that central atom and each of the surrounding atoms. So two electrons here, two there, two there, and two there. Now, we're starting to use up electrons at this point. So we have 32 valence electrons to work with. We've just placed eight of them, two, four, six, eight. And so if we subtract off that eight that we've placed, we have 24 electrons left over. Now, if we look at this, boron has its octet, two, four, six, eight, but these fluorines only have two electrons. So obviously they're not done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take the remaining electrons and we're gonna place them in pairs around each of the surrounding atoms until each of those surrounding atoms has an octet. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 
14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. That uses up all of our valence electrons. So if we count these uh, bonding electrons, so 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So that's all of the electrons that we have available for this structure. So we've done that now and we have no more electrons left, so we don't have to worry about putting any electrons on that central atom. The last thing we're gonna do is check and make sure that every atom in the structure has a complete octet, aside from hydrogen, which isn't here, but if it was, it would only want two. So two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. So good. So that means we are all done with this structure. Yay, happy dance. Okay, now what happens if we try to draw the compound formaldehyde using those same steps? Because I didn't give you the complete picture. So if we do that, and you can go ahead and try it on your paper first to see where I got this structure, but if we do that, then we're gonna end up with a problem. Now, let me just remind you, how would we do this? We'd have four electrons, we're gonna count up valence electrons first, four electrons for carbon, six electrons for oxygen, that is 10 electrons, and one for each hydrogen, so that's 12 electrons total. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. See, I've used them all up. Now, each hydrogen is happy. It has two electrons, super happy. Look at oxygen, two, four, six, eight, it's happy. But we have a small problem. We look at carbon, two, four, six, uh-oh. And we don't have any electrons left. So we can't just add a pair of electrons here because we'd be adding electrons to a compound and turning it into an anion and we can't do that. So that means we have to figure out a different way to make sure that, that carbon has an octet without taking it away from oxygen because oxygen wants its octet too. So what we're gonna do is have carbon and oxygen share four electrons instead of two electrons. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna drag one of these lone pairs down here and we're gonna form a double bond. So those two lines right there, those represent four electrons now. So let's go ahead and count octets, two, four, six, eight, and then carbon, two, four, six, eight, and of course our hydrogens were already happy anyway. So now, we have a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Oxygen still has two lone pairs, but not three like it had before. And carbon forms four bonds with other atoms to have a total of eight shared electrons around it entirely. So now carbon has its octet. Now, I drew it this way just to show you that those electrons were being dragged down to be able to share between the carbon and oxygen, but we really, we usually draw it this way where we basically evenly distribute those pairs of electrons on oxygen. Okay, so just a little summary. So covalent bonds are formed when atoms share electrons. And we can use Lewis electron dot diagrams to illustrate this covalent bond formation. Now we need to make sure that every atom in the completed Lewis structure has an octet. Hydrogen, remember, is happy with two electrons. So we don't want to give it an octet. That would be incorrect. Sometimes it's necessary to use double bonds or triple bonds between atoms in order to properly represent the bonding and make sure everybody has an octet. But you should not do this until after you've distributed all of the electrons in the compound and then start making uh, double or triple bonds if necessary.